several weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to hear Aaron give an excellent talk on the nature of uh, public education in California. Um, his premise was that public education is not uh, succeeded and has been a t an abject failure. Um, he cited studies, statistics, and um, to substantiate this assertion. Um, and for the most part, his position seemed uh, absolutely unassailable. However, he goes wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. Yeah. But you wrongly assume that simply because people are graduating from co from high school without being able to read with proficiency, or to do basic, basic math, and have absolutely no idea of what uh, the nature of our government is, that they failed. You know, this the structure of public education is not conducive to to a public schooling is not conducive to education. And that is almost by design. They're not intended to educate. They're intended to indoctrinate. Uh, this is made explicit in a ruling by the, the second appellate court in California in which uh, Justice uh, H. Walter Krosky um, effectively banning uh, homeschooling stated, a primary purpose of educational system is to train the school to uh, children in good citizenship, patriotism, and loyalty to the state and the nation as a means of protecting the, the public welfare. This is a prime Ooh. training, not education, is the emphasis. Um, patriotism and loyalty are the, are the ends yeah. uh, to the state. Um, this, and this portion of the ruling was actually from an earlier case from 1961, which was drawing directly from California statute when, when, it, when it made that assertion. Fortunately, his decision was overturned later that year, but when the full court was in session. But uh, there are a lot of telling statements which came out during the, the trial proceedings. One of the lawyers for the teachers' union stated, quote, parents do not have an unfettered right to dictate the terms of their children's education. He further warned that, tell, that teaching our children, will, teaching our own children will lead to educational anarchy. So these are things which, the, the are asserting what the actual function of the state is, of state education is, is educating people in the ways of the state. Um, if this is not new, Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was one of our founding fathers, actually wrote, um, our, our schools of learning, by producing one general and uniform system of education, will render the mass of the people more homogenous and thereby fit them more easily for uniform and peaceable government. Education since the public education, since its inception in this country has been towards the end of getting a homogenous and peaceable society. This was framed by distrust, uh, distrust of diversity because of the multiculturalism which was already part of America, uh, of America. But the purpose is primarily to homogenize, to control, not to educate. This is, you know, perpetuated in the, in the last century by educators such as John Dewey, who um, was actually more interested in turning out people who would fit well within the cogs of the industrial machine which was, was being uh, brought about in his Europe. In fact, he totally de-emphasized um, reason, teaching of logic and reason and philosophy as being useless and, and the people should concentrate on what is now the uh, mantra, reading, writing, and arithmetic, you know, because that was practical for people within the workforce of his day. It was necessary to get people to work in the factories and foundries. But in our post-industrial society, these skills are, are, even these basic skills are somewhat superfluous. You know, we, we've totally gotten away from manufacturing, where even our service enterprises have become more automated. Someone needs to know little more than to push the right icon on the screen to, to tender an order, and the, the computer tells them how much change to get. It's, so what is necessary within this society, within our instructional systems, to come about with a uniform and peaceable government. One needs only look at the organization, the day-to-day -day organization of public schools. First, students are compelled to arrive early at an, an hour which is unnatural for, for growing kids. You know, it is not natural for them, for especially high school students, to get up, <laughs> to get up at a time. No, it, 
it really is. I mean, educational studies show that they're not productive until after 11 o'clock during the day. Yet, yet their most important function occurred before that. The most important function that any student um, fulfills at school is being there for attendance. Because everything, all the government metrics are based on stats. The, um, um, the average daily attendance is the primary statistic, which you can see in any study um, defining average uh, payout to different school systems. That's why the state is so hell-bent on compelling people to be there. There was a recent head, a headline um, in California, just um, in May actually, where four parents arrested in truancy suite Okay, this occurred in um, yeah. Siskiyou County, where the district attorney's office, the county probation department, the office of education, and the sheriff's department all formed a joint task force, effectively, and to uh, round up parents of truant children, truant children, and bring them you know, to jail. Oh. The, the, the charges were contributing to the delinquency of, of minor. Once again, the states show that they want to preserve that monopoly of contributing to the of the Now this you know, you know this, is, this, so what students are learning from this is um, that in, the state has a right to compel their attendance and tell them where they have to be and at what time they have to be there. After attendance, the bell rings and the student moves from one room to, to another where they're given um, instructions which are below the standards of any industrialized nation in the world, which you so rightly pointed out. <laughs> and, uh, the, and, is, the, and um, but that's unimportant. What is important is that when the bell rings again, no matter how engaged they might be in a subject, um, that they are to disengage, to move to the next place, which is, is defined for them. And the important issues are not whether or not they've, they've gotten anything from the instruction that they've been receiving, but whether they're malingering in the hall between classes. What the feedback that they get is, why are you in the hall? Why are you, why are you where you're supposed to be? Yeah. So this is, um, these are matters which are done, of course, to, uh, to assure a more uniform and peaceable government, as, as Benjamin Rush said. One must learn to be a member of the herd. This conditioning continues day after day of the school year. At the end of the year, providing a student has attended properly is advanced to the next grade level. While there are swings for and against social promotion, um, it has become the de facto norm. In fact, the, the Los Angeles School District, just last month again, officially banned its in on social promotion. Before they were saying that they were actually not going to promote somebody who just happened to be in attendance. But they, their official position is now, if they're in class, they deserve to stay with that class. And, and we won't ostracize them by, by um, not promoting them with their peers. So, um, it is, so social promotion is now the standard. Okay. All this is not to say that, that education uh, doesn't occur within the public school system. It does. Education can occur anywhere. Um, but it's harder when the government's in. <laughs> you know, we're actually not, they're not facilitating the education of our children. They're impeding it. Uniformity and artificial structure are not at all conducive to education. But the fact is, for, for some people, they thrive in that structure. They need that structure. But for others, they're, they're only there because they're compelled. They, they will do anything to disrupt to take away from the, the educational experience for others, because that's the only control that they can have over the situation. They're there by, by force of law. Their parents will be in jail. They will be, you know, their parents will be fine. It definitely impacts them. So their only, their only thing that they can do is act out. They're acting out, disrupts the entire classroom, takes away from education for everyone, because we are doing them a favor by compelling them to be educated. This is, this is, um, all this is structural. It's not something which can be reformed by tweaking one system here or one system there. It needs to be totally torn down and reformed, not reformed. 
Reformation is impossible. So what can we do? The answer is just like the answer with quite a bit of economic issues, is a free market. That's the only system which would allow the diversity we need in our educational systems to meet the diverse needs of the people being educated. How do we come about doing that within our current structure? Well, we need to make it more possible for parents to have the funds to educate their children. We need to, um, <coughs> instead of vouchers, which can be manipulated and misused, I believe, is as a state step towards a totally free system, have tax credits, which can be shared tax credits. So corporations can set up cooperatives for, for people to get ed education, <coughs> or they could be you know direct direct tax credits to the people receiving. But because of the structural changes which are necessary for us to get to have educate our educational system even come close to fulfilling the function that, that we all assume that it's attempting to, to fill. Um, we need radical change. And it is to that end that I'm announcing my candidacy for the running for the 33rd district, assembly district in the state of California. The districts will be finalized on Monday unless they're challenged by courts, um, by the Republicans who are threatening to bring um, a challenge, but we'll see. But right now, the 33rd district includes a big chunk of, of um, San Bernardino County from the mountains up and uh, goes right along the borderline and then all the way up to Needles and all the way past Barstow. But <laughs> and I'm not promising to bring about all the necessary changes because it, every single thing that I propose would definitely meet with a massive um, political force <coughs> to go against it. What I can say, though, is I will introduce ideas which will demand attention and that I will have alternatives to the status quo, everything that, that they assume to be real. Plus, politically, right now, there are some things which, there are some steps which can be taken. Um, right now, our ex expenditures for education have gone up over the past years, but you're hearing more and more that less money is getting to the classrooms. That's true because more and more is being tied up in administration. So the administration, we're getting more and more administrators for fewer and fewer teachers and fewer and fewer educators. The infrastructure expenses aren't even taken into account in most of the budgeting. So by bringing to the attention of the public the outrageous expenditures in administration, not counting teachers' pensions, which are also pretty crazy, um, there are some things which would be popular support and which we could direct. But again, what we need is education, not indoctrination. Thank you. Here, here.